quick revision video on nitriles and hydroxy nitriles. We'll start with some essentials. Nitriles contain the CN functional group, and you can see there's a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. Hydroxy nitriles contain the OH group, so the hydroxyl group, and the CN group as well. So there's four on the screen now. If you want to have a go at naming those, pause the video and then play them when you're ready. So we'll start with this one here, and the important thing to realise is we've actually got three carbons in the molecule. Often students just count those two and forget about the one in the functional group. So this is called propane nitrile. We've got this one next. So we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. That's carbon number one. So the bromine is actually on carbon number four. So this is called 4-bromopentane nitrile. So you can see we've got a hydroxy nitrile here. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hydroxy groups on carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one's called 4-hydroxy hexane nitrile. And the last one, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons. We've got a chlorine on carbon number 3 and a hydroxy group on carbon number 2. So we've got to use the alphabet rule. So the chlorine is going to come first in the name, even though it's on a higher number carbon. So this is called 3-chloro-2-hydroxy-butane nitrile. So we'll focus on the nitriles now, and then we'll move on to the hydroxy nitriles. So nitriles can be made by reacting haloalkanes with cyanide ions, and that's got to be in ethanol. And the ethanol prevents any water reacting with the haloalkane, and that would give you an alcohol. The mechanism that we'll look at on the next slide is nucleophilic substitution. And it's very useful for organic synthesis because it's a way of extending the carbon chain. So butane nitrile has four carbons in it, but remember one of the carbons is coming from the cyanide ion. So the haloalkane only needs to have three in it. So we need to react chloropropane with a source of CN minus ion. So I'm using KCN. Remember the ethanol. So there's the products there, butane, nitrile and KCL. So moving on to the mechanism, remember it's nucleophilic substitution. So you can see the way I've drawn the cyanide ion up there. You can see a pair of electrons clearly. So they can be donated. So the CN minus ion can act as a nucleophile. They're going to be attracted towards that slightly positive carbon in that polar CCL bond. And we represent that like that. And obviously this bond, this pair of electrons is going to be repelled completely onto the chlorine and break that bond. And that's going to give us these products here. Notice I haven't got the potassium ions in there because effectively they're just spectating in the reaction. So moving on to hydroxy nitriles now. So they're made by reacting carbonyl compounds, so aldehydes and ketones, with HCN, hydrogen cyanide. Now HCN is too toxic, so we use a mixture of sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid, which makes the HCN sort of in situ in the reaction. So the reaction equation for that looks like that. But we're just going to use in the equations, we're going to use HCN. And the mechanism is nucleophilic addition. So we'll use these two as our examples. We've got an aldehyde and a ketone. So starting with propanol, remember we're using HCN in the reaction equation. Well, basically the H is going to go into this oxygen and the CN is going to extend this carbon chain here. So the product looks like that. So what's that called? We've got four carbons in the chain and we've got the hydroxy group on carbon number two. So that's 2-hydroxybutane nitrile. So moving on to the other one now, butanone and sodium cyanide sulfuric acid. So remember, HCN goes in the equation, and we're just going to put the H on the O, and the CN goes on that carbon as well. So the product looks like that in skeletal formula. So what's that going to be called? Well, we've got one, two, three, four carbons, the longest continuous chain. So it's another butane nitrile. We've got the hydroxy group and a methyl group on carbon number two. 
So it's going to be called 2-hydroxy-2-methyl-butanitrile. And the hydroxy is coming before the methyl in the name because of the alphabet rule. So we'll look at that mechanism now. So this is nucleophilic addition, remember. And again, C and minus ions have that lone pair of electrons, which they can donate. So it's a nucleophile. And I'm shooting to see what's going to happen. The pair of electrons on the cyanide ion attracted the slightly positive carbon. And that's going to repel the pi electron pair up onto the oxygen. And it's going to generate this intermediate. And then we bring an H plus ion in and form a bond with it like that. So the product looks like that. And it's worth noting that water can also be used at this stage here. But if you went for water, then you're going to get a hydroxide ion as well produced at the end of the mechanism. So we'll finish with some reactions of the nitrile group. There's only two we need to know. So the first one we'll look at is the reduction of the nitrile group. And we use hydrogen and nickel catalyst for that. And nitriles are reduced to amines. So the example I'm using is the reduction of butane nitrile. So there's the product. And notice I've coloured in the hydrogens that have gone on in red. So you can see to balance the equation, we need two moles of H2 per nitrile group that's reduced. And the amine that's been produced is butyl amine. And the second reaction we need to know about is the hydrolysis of the nitrile group. So the nitrile group's hydrolyzed to carboxylic acid group and we use hot aqueous HCl. So we're going to hydrolyze propane nitrile. So this time I'm showing the triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen because that bond's going to break. Remember hydrolysis, chemical breakdown of a substance by reaction with water. So the carboxylic acid we're going to make is propanoic acid and we also get ammonium chloride produced as well. And you can see we need two moles of water to balance the equation.